All right, we're doing TikTok reacts. We're back with TikTok reacts. Also, we're always looking for submissions for these, so if you have any Overwatch TikToks you want us to react to, leave a comment, let us know, post them on my Discord, things like that. So here we go. The first TikTok we have here is from uh, Neandra. They have a lot of awesome uh, videos we've seen reacted to, so make sure to check them out. And here we go. Let's see who this one is. Subtitles say laughs in Monster if you use Arissa's laugh emote with her mythic skin. Bastion had a ton of different ultimates prototypes like this little mine that could be deployed and would fire around. That's kind of cool. Speech rat skin has a wristband that says if found, return to Roadhog. Echo has oh. some unique voice lines for eliminating heroes she's duplicated. No odd feelings, love. <laughs> oh, did that sting? When Yadi waves hello, she looks away. Also, her basket pose is a reference to Dark Souls. I didn't Matthew know that. Ball originally had a flamethrower as a primary. Really? You could also charge up to launch forward. On can Dark we have City, that back? You can find helpful graffiti above various health packs. On Black Forest, you can find what looks like woodpecker eggs, which might be a nod to the last Bastion cinematic. That was a On good the cinematic. On the Toronto PVE mission, you can find this little lion doodle, which is also part of Cardboard Reinhardt. Mercy's triage victory pose has Hearthstone on her tablet. Oh. In Hanamura, I mean, you can find this large arrow, which is a reference to the old dragon short. I didn't realize that. That's really cool. It isn't Hearthstone also in like Gibraltar? Like in the, I don't know if they've changed it in Gibraltar, but I remember like, was it Gibraltar that had Hearthstone or was it, was it Hollywood in that little room on attack? I can't remember. I think Hollywood attack had it too, right? Yeah, I, I, that was a, all those are like really cool. Just like things you don't even realize. All right. This one is from, um, uh, Nick makes content and it says, I hope this helps you get better with Doomfist. Well, I need to get better at Doomfist. So hopefully this is helpful. The best way to warm up on Doomfist. First, I do about five sets of bedtime for Doom. Okay, I'm good at this, okay. I follow this up with ten sets of, of course they have a Sombra. Yep, yep, I'm good at this part. Next, I do five sets of, wow, Hinder's so fun. Yep, I'm, I'm doing good so far. I'm doing good so far. After that, I do a whopping 50 sets of Gotta love counter watch. Yup. Dude, I'm gonna be a good doom fit. I'm gonna be a good doom. This is typically followed by seven sets of why did they feel the need to buff horse? This is great. I am gonna be so good at doom. Next, I do three sets of make it make sense. So, so far, I've been pretty perfect with my routine. I then move on to 10 sets of, wow, they really suzu that. No! Ah! Yeah, this is me! To continue with my warm-up, I do 30 sets of, gotta love Malga. <laughs> Finally, I finish off my warm-up with a grueling 100 sets of, Oh my gosh, they literally used everything on me. Um. Chat, honestly, I think I'm good to go. Look at this Doomfist gameplay. I'm holding right click intensity. <laughs> What's up? Oh, we have Faria here. She always has great videos. Okay, so let's see, let's see, let's see Faria's experience here playing tank in season nine. I'm an orphan on the streets of London! It is 1862! I am starving with my bowl of stew! And I'm fine! I got a straight piece of bread from a stranger! Oh, I get to live another day! Yes! Oh. Tank! Tank hurts so much! What do you mean? Tank's great! So if you wonder what's happening here, this is the... This is the example of what it's like when you play a tank and you have to wait in HP because you constantly take a bunch of damage. So, this right here shows you how fun tank actually is, right? Because you get to have the option of being happy that you didn't fall over immediately. And that's what tanking is all about, right? And having your teammates yell at you. And taking a bunch of damage. And then not being able to play. And then having to play hide and seek or prop hunt the majority of your time. And then still getting yelled at by your teammates if you do make a good play. Because you over ulted. Because you wanted to do something. After not being able to build your ult up for two minutes because you couldn't do anything. But then when you finally use your ultimate, your teammates are mad at you because they use their ult first. Um, so.
All right, we have uh, Lexi here. Lexi Pash? I'm going to say something that's a little bit controversial. Uh -oh. And this is just my opinion from what I've gathered watching myself, streamers, and even y'all's videos on TikTok. Okay. I genuinely think that the better you are, the harder it is to climb and comp this season in particular. Because if you are put on a team with a bunch of worse people than you, which truly seems to be the case almost every single time that I'm in a game, if you win, you get less percentage because the game expected you to carry. If you lose, you lose more percentage because the game is like, why didn't you carry? And I think there's a reason where there are streamers who, you know, are pros or used to be pros that their whole job is to play this game every single day. And they're struggling to climb out of certain ranks, not because they're not good, but because they're too good. And because of this rank reset, the game just keeps giving them players that are worse than them to try to, you know, balance it out when really they should be higher. And for me, it just makes the grind honestly not worth it. Yeah, I mean, that's, I, I chat, can't disagree. It sounds like I'm just too good. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't want to say anything, but I'm glad we were able to kind of point it out here. I'm just too good. That's why if you ever see me have a bad day of games, it's because I'm too good. All right, we got Noah here saying, let's go over the fantasy of a balanced game. It's never happening. Well, before I start this and listen to this whole thing, yeah, it's really hard to balance Overwatch. It, it, it's too many variables. Like some people like will look specifically just at like the hero balance itself and be like, well, yeah, if you do this, 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 and this, you're fine. Yeah, but you don't even take into account the maps, right? If Overwatch was a game that had the same map, that played essentially the same way, maybe, maybe, maybe you can get it to a point of, like, an okay, consistent balance. Problem, the problem is, right, let's go to the other side of that, is that you don't take into account maps, right? It never will be perfectly balanced, especially in a 5v5 rollock format. And what people so play. the fact that that is still the developer's main goal, as evident in their new blog post, is astonishing. Now, maybe that's just something they have to say, oh yeah, we want every character to be viable. But like, come on, do we really want every character to be just as viable as everyone else? You really want Roadhog just as viable as Reinhardt? You want Junkrat Bastion just as viable as Tracer? You want Lifeweaver to be just as viable as Ana? The fact of the matter is, you've already dug yourself a hole by designing terrible heroes. When Hog is really good, the game feels terrible. When Mercy is really good, the game feels terrible. There are many problematic heroes in the game that just simply should not be as viable as other heroes, and that is okay. Season 9 has proven that you do not need a balanced game for people to have fun. What you will do by attempting to find this utopia of every single character being viable is fall back into this pattern of nerf, buff, rework, nerf, buff, rework that we've had for the past year and a half that nobody liked. Okay, so uh, there's going to be a bit of a discussion here on some on some points that I'll kind of bring up, and other points I, I'll I'll go with there. One, I think when it comes to the heroes, like there are certain heroes that have had this rotation of like buffs and nerfs, right? And one of those actually is like we've kind of seen that Arissa Roadhog Mauga rotation. There's a certain point where like some heroes you don't need to make them be meta because when they become meta, it's a little bit less fun, right? But when it comes to like what heroes are viable, I think it's I think there's a definitely a way for them to have heroes be viable, and they've done that quite a bit. It's usually when they end up in that Arissa Roadhog rotation and Malga where things change a bit, and that's more of like the cycle and the rotation they need to break. But like when it comes to like, they're not. I, my vibe is they're not trying to get every hero have a fifty percent win rate. They just want to shift up the meta sometimes, but like. I don't think they're trying to make it so every hero is at a 50% win rate. I think they have a range, and I think that range is probably viable. And when they're out of that range, that's when they make those changes. Problem being is you can have the discussion of, yes, every time Arissa becomes meta, and I'm not talking like if Arissa's playable. Arissa's playable right now, that's fine. Arissa versus Arissa, right? When Arissa versus Arissa are going against each other, that's when you have these metas that become a little bit stale or not as fun for people, and that's a different story than what's being discussed there, right? From Mixed Freight, Three other random Overwatch facts you might not know. All right, let's see. Random Overwatch facts you might not know. It's the little things. Number one, Junkrat sips the Overwatch main theme. No, I didn't mean sings. He literally sips the theme. If you have this emote equipped for Junkrat where he pulls out a drink, you will hear what I mean. <sighs> Number two. I'll be real with you. The 
I know that's probably the case. I didn't even hear it at that point. <laughs> that's great. Echo pronounces the proper way to say Malga and Alari when she duplicates. Adaptive circuits engaged. Malga. Adaptive circuits engaged. Iliari. Number three, somber hacks. <gasps> yeah, people ask that sometimes. They're like, hey, why does like Echo say that's because they try to get the, like the pronunciation correct when they do Echo. So they're doing the pronunciation that you would you would kind of go with, right? Okay, I'll elaborate. Yeah. When you load onto the maps, Blizzard World on defense and Busan on the karaoke side, uh -huh. select Sombra. When you walk towards the basketball game, a hacked icon appears on the screen. That's probably why she has the high score. Where's the fun in playing fair? On Busan, all you need to do is hold F on the microphone and the karaoke screen will get hacked. Mess with the best and die like the rest. Did you know these? Because we're back at it again with... You know what? That was cool, though. I, I like that. That, that. Those are like fun videos that are always cool to see, right? Like, that, that was really cool. I, li I like that. I love learning this stuff. We have uh, Play of the James. Try explaining this to someone who's never played Overwatch. Well, I can do that. So what's happening here is, yep, that, there you go. Cage fight and stuff. So, so... Oh, my God. Yeah, so what's happening? You can see it right here. Yep. There you go. That's Overwatch. You know what? I'm going to be honest with you. That wasn't even as bad as I've seen it. Uh, that, that, if anything, that was actually pretty good. I, I can, uh, we, we can show you some real fun moments. All right, we have uh, Two Leg Spider. If you know all of these, you're kind of the goat. Okay, let's see what this is. Three texts that you should know for D.Va. One, normally when D.Va remex, she stands completely still, making it easy to kill her during the animation. But if you remex near a ledge or yes, a slope it will surface, move you D.Va will slide during yes. her animation, making her much harder to hit. Yep. Two, D.Va's bomb is actually able to block bullets and can stand even stand a high noon from hitting its target. Yep. Three. This is how it normally looks when Diva Dmex, but this is how Hold it your looks button. when Diva you go flying. space during her Dmex. Yep. Like the video if you learn something new and follow for more. Wait, if I know all that, that means it says we're the goat. Look at that. Okay, Wrecking Ball Tech Part Six from uh, Zinzor. Here we go. Underscore O W. Watch two Wrecking Ball Techs in under sixty seconds. Part Six. I'm ready. The tech I'm gonna show you today is War Resetting. It probably has different names for it, but that's what I call it. So instead of slowing down like you do in a double boop, for example, to give it time to reset, you actually just hit the wall and then you would reset the boop like that, like this. Oh, that's actually kind of nice. I, I, the volume's a little bit low there, but to summarize, if you hit the wall after your first boop, it resets your boop. That's kind of informative. I like that. We have Lane Hemingway here saying, I still like Dorado. Dorado may be getting a rework in the future. Here are some changes that I would personally like to see. Getting supports to high ground on first requires a hero's journey level trek. So I would add some way to get up to the top of Mustard and the Orange Building. Yes, we call this building Mustard and this one Ketchup. That's this fine. This also gives you a much better angle to support your high ground divers from afar. The access to the high ground up here is, is the issue. So teams get caught here. So I wonder if like more cover around this area and then more access this way might be better than just doing that. Cause I feel like you'll still get caught here. I don't know. It, it's, Definitely more high ground access is Dorado though. Definitely needs to happen. But I need I would need to see it like drawn out. From afar. Second has another crazy long rotation to the high ground that results in a really awkward. Oh, there's no cursor there, I sorry. Ignore that and add a second level to this building here and some way to access it near the mini inside to give the attackers some high ground contest as well. Third is kind of whatever, but again So my second point idea is I you know like the you know how you have to rotate high ground to go right side? all the way around i think they should redo that area almost um not like it, it, it's cool to have there but players have to spend too much time so i would like it if you had direct high ground access to the building above not on that side so like direct high ground access to i don't know what you call it in the middle of second point but that building i think is going to be a lot better than having to take the scenic route that takes four years to go around i think it needs to be a little better is it a jump pad i, I don't think a jump pad but something to give easier like high ground access would be would be good. And getting to the high ground is a nightmare. Mm -hmm. I think an elevator here would allow for some aggressive plays from the attackers and allow for more effective mid-fight rotations. I actually don't hate Dorado, but playing on a brig on attack is super awkward, so I wanted to fix some of that. You know, I, it's it's an interesting discussion on that. I, I feel like on third point, the problem though, if they have like an elevator there, is like in current Overwatch with how much CC you have and how easy you get booped there, it almost feels like you're funneling in. There's, I, I think they would just have to do sightline stuff for third point. Or maybe, like, I expand the door on the... I don't know. There's, I, I don't know how much they can do with an existing map and how much they can expand. Like, how easy is it to expand the doorway on third point to make it so it's just larger and easier for players to get through it while also not hecking up the other side of the map? All right, so we have uh, Tefrite98 here. Starting off with some tanks. How to counter every ultimate as Kiriko. 
Here's how to counter every ultimate as Kiriko from a top 100 support main. Let's start with the tanks. For Diva Bomb, try to see if you can dink her whilst her bomb is cooking. Kiri has both Suzu and Swift set that can save her from the explosion, so you might be able to kill her before she remax. As I just mentioned, you can run to a teammate that might die to the bomb and Suzu to the ground, saving you both. If your Suzu's on cooldown, however, Kiri gets in vulnerability frames when using her Swift set. So if you yep. time it right, you can dodge the damage, even if you're TPing to someone close to you in the vicinity of the bomb. For Doomfist, okay. if you have Suzu up, run to your most vulnerable teammate. This could be anything from a Zenyatta to a Moira who you know has fade on cooldown, as these will most likely be the Doomfist's target. Once there, wait for the slam to come through and use your Suzu on both of you. If you don't have it available, I'd suggest splitting from your team so that if you are the target, you can swift step to safety. Yeah. If both Suzu. are on cooldown, however, I love try to it. stand close to a ledge. If you Alright, what's next target, here? You can just jump off high ground and dodge the damage. Versus Malga, you unfortunately cannot heal through the shield. But you can TP if you see in. Your teammate winning the 1v1 in the ult, run in and help him finish the job. Otherwise, I would just recommend staying outside of it as you most likely just get yourself. So killed. just let Versus your teammate ult die. Takes a few seconds to build up to enough damage to kill. When she uses her ult, wait just under two seconds before throwing your Suzu. This will buy you and your team enough enough time to walk out of the ultimate should she choose to continue charging it. Junker Queen's ult applies an anti-healing buff oh, yeah. to whoever she hits. My best advice is to wait till she applies the debuff, then aim your Suzu to try to get as many players as possible. Yep. If you're the only one hit though, you can use your swift step to cleanse the debuff off you yep, and you save just your swift Suzu step. for this something is wonderful. else. I'm Sadly loving. for Roadhog, there's not too much you can do in terms of negating. I mean, they're on Roadhog though, so I feel like at that point, like they're already kind of countering themselves a little bit at times, so. Wink, wink. This is a great time to use Suzu on them. Like in Fall of a Part 2. So, I, what I will say about that is, one thing is in common here, if you just Suzu people, they will not have fun. Alright, tank rolled. Tank rolls explained in three minutes. Okay, this is Coach Osi. Always has really good informative stuff. Let's see. The tank in Overwatch is the center of the team. So understanding what your tank does and knowing what your opponent's tank is capable of is important, especially for beginners. This video will be covering how different tanks play overall, rather than how each one operates individually for the sake of simplicity. That's cool, this guide will also teach you what tanks you should learn so that you have a solid spread of tool sets to use as you fight your way through the ladder. Okay. In Overwatch 2, there are three basic types of tanks. Brawl tanks, mid-range tanks, and dive tanks. Those might be different terms than what you were expecting, and that's actually my intention. I believe players are often misled by terms such as poke tank when there's really no such thing. No tank plays purely to poke, and all tanks are capable of brawling to an extent Extent. Sigma, a tank often referred to as a poke tank, was utilized in a brawl composition during the previous meta. This goes to show that playstyle utilized by a tank is not purely determined by the hero, but rather by the composition and the matchup. Let's begin by defining your brawl tanks. These tanks are specialists in a sense. They work extremely well with brawl compositions, but they lack flexibility. Only three tanks fall into this category, those being Reinhardt, Ramatra, and Malga. Mm -hmm. All three lack significant damage outside of a certain range, and team rotations with these tanks are often made to close distance with their targets. Everything with these tanks is about closing distance. I'm loving the this music, The closer they the get, the more dangerous. Is this a vibe? Next, mid-range tanks. These tanks maintain a more balanced playstyle. They often benefit from solar fights and have the capability to both brawl and play at range. The mid-range tanks are Sigma, Hog, Orisa, Junker Queen, and Zarya. Take Zarya, for example. Zarya right plays place. for a slower fight where she can build charge. Yep. The more charge, cool the more damage here, output. Well, I already she pointed essentially that out, becomes a cool. late fight carry. Zarya wants to delay a direct brawl with her opponent until she is strong enough. Otherwise, she will lose. Junker Queen is very similar. She plays at range, poking her mm -hmm. opponent down, sometimes hiding behind corners. With the right timing, she can pop out and deal burst damage and brawl her opponent. The final Oh, wait, I, so far this has actually been pretty informative. I, I think, like, I think one problem with that, that, that kind of, I, I think, and I don't know if Overwatch is trying to get away from this, but I, I feel like, I, I think we're getting less into the having heroes, like, or tanks put into these, like, different categories. And I think they actually, uh, they made a great example at the beginning where they mentioned that, like, Sigma is, Sigma's not, Sigma's a poke tank, but also can play outside of a poke tank. Right? So that means that Sigma is just a tank at that point too, right? Where you can have multiple different strategies. It's okay to have tanks not even be in a category. Some tanks are just, they're just, they just have their own play style, their own style, their own way they go about things. People got so passionate about meme and tempo tank that I haven't seen them just define any, any, any other, any other hero since. The final type of tank is the dive tank. There are four of them. Winston, Diva, Doomfist, and Ball. Yeah, dive I mean, tanks they did, are I've... specialists in the aspect of movement and displacement. They isolate their targets with their speed, but they trade direct frontline pressure for that ability. I dive that. tanks are also capable of brawling, similar to mid-range tanks, although it isn't their specialty. A Winston player could choose between jumping the enemy backline and isolating Ana, or throwing a bubble on his brig to brawl with her. 
What's most important to understand is that the hero you choose doesn't necessarily decide the playstyle you must use, or what the enemy will decide to use. Some Winston players will try to force brawls more, some Winston players will focus on effective dives more, and the best Winston players in the world will know how to switch their playstyle on a whim depending on what they're up against. The point of my categorization is to provide you with a swift generalization of what each tank is good at, not what they will do, or what you should always do. If you're a tank player, I recommend you learn one of each of these tanks. Out of the dive tanks, Winston, D.Va, and Doomfist are all good to learn, so know at least one of them. Some mm -hmm. of the mid-range tanks are more situational, while others are more universal. Sigma is the most valuable to learn. A I do want to pause for a second. This kind of goes back to what we were saying, too. It's like, you can put these like tanks in categories, but like the, I think the one problem you run into is if you watch something like this and you're like, hey, if you watch something like this, you're like, hey, I, I was told that I can only play a poke tank in this poke comp, you don't have to do that. So that's why, like, I, I also think there's a certain point where, like, I don't know if Blizzard's going down this route, but, like, not having, like, direct categories for every tank and have them play more into a style. Like, I think they want you to be able to play any style with your tanks. Outside of, like, what, Reinhardt, who... If I told you you want to play poke as Reinhardt, you're in for a treat. As some maps play heavily to his strengths, regardless of meta. With Brawl tanks, you don't actually need to learn any of them, but I'd recommend picking up Ramacha for those close range maps. Although you can use Brawly or mid range like JQ or Zarya, Ramacha will often be superior. But of course, it all depends on where the meta takes us. Yeah, I mean, like, to give you an idea, by the way, this is a very informative video, and I think it does a good job of describing the tanks. I also feel like if you go too deep into the cat, like into like those categories and stuff, then like. And, and, you know, I, I I think it's informative. I think I think it's a good video in that sense. I feel like sometimes, like, I think the point of, like, you know, Sigma's more than a poke tank is good. I think, like, saying Sigma's in this one category, et cetera, is a little bit different. So it's, like, it's 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 a good video. It actually, it kind of, uh, it, it's it's well done. And I think it gives you a good idea of, like, what to expect from tanks and, like, different play styles. But I think you can even expand it past that, right? I feel like you come to a certain point now where tanks just have different ways you can play them. Um... Like, we see the the team in OWCS Pacific that runs the um, the Rush Sigma comp with the Lucio, right? And you don't ever see that, but it works, and they actually are in, what, the loser bracket finals right now of that region? Like, that's good. Like, they're one win away from, like, going to land. So, yeah, there's a lot there. Okay, this one is from um, Kaisler? Sorry I, I if I butchered your name. It just says Blade Denied. Let's find out. That's fine. Follow me, Monsieur. Yeah, that, that's a, that, yep. I don't know why that was funny to me. It's just like, it's, that's exactly what happens. Anytime Blade happens, everything goes well for the other team. 